and we bow our heads. Oh, gracious Father. Yes. Lord God, we thank you, God, for this day. Lord God, for this is the day that you have made. We thank you, Lord, for how you kept us, oh God, throughout this week. Thank you, oh God, for keeping us on the dangerous highways and byways, oh God. Thank you, oh God, even on our jobs, oh God, even when we're overlooked and even when we're done wrong, oh God, God, you're still with us, oh God. Lord, help us, oh God, to lean on you and not to thine own understanding, oh God. For we know, oh God, that the blood still works and that you're still on the throne. Help us, oh God, even when we're feeling down, oh God. Even when we're ready to throw in the towel, oh God. Help us to know, oh God, that you are our hope, oh God, and, and that, that we can lean on you, oh God. Help us, oh God, to continue to believe in you, oh God. To believe your word, to live by your word, oh God. To abide by your word. And help us, oh God, continue to encourage one another. Continue to bless this ministry, oh God. Continue to bless Pastor and First Lady, oh God. Continue to bless that church, oh God. Continue to bless all of us that's here on tonight, oh God. Lord God, even those, oh God, that are not here on tonight, oh God. Help us, oh God. Continue to cover us with your blood, oh God. Let us know, oh God, that we are not alone. You are always with us, oh God, even when we feel like we're alone, oh God. Even at night, oh God, when we think about all that we've been through, oh God. When the tears begin to fall, oh God. Help us to know, oh God, that the tears will not always fall. Because God, you are God, and you're God all by yourself. And Lord God, we know, oh God, that you said you're going to wipe every tear away, oh God. Continue your blessings, oh God. Bless your word that's going to go forth on tonight, oh God. And Lord God, we thank you. We praise you, oh God. After all we've been through, oh God, it is you, oh God, that poured us through. God, how can we ever repay you, oh God? How can we ever repay for what you've done for us, oh God? We can say thank you a thousand times, oh God, and it still won't be enough. Yes, God. Oh God, we praise you on tonight. We thank you, oh God. We love you, oh God. Yes, God. Lord God, we clap our hands now, oh God. Let's know how much we love and appreciate you, oh God. We worship you, oh God. Because God, if it had not been for you, if it had not been for you, oh God, God, we have been gave up, oh God. Help us, oh God, continue to believe in you. And we thank you on tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
thank him. Come on, thank him. Lord, I want to thank you. Come on, just thank him in the room. Hallelujah. Come on, thank him, thank him. Thank him with the fruit of your lips on tonight. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. The Spirit shows up to help us when we're weak. And that's why my, my, his strength is made perfect. Come on, isn't that, isn't that, isn't that Paul on, on Sunday? That's what he said. He said, I prayed three times. Thrice I prayed. I kept on praying. You, the only thing you said to me was my grace is sufficient. Come on, that's what he said. And then he said, because of it, he said, I read the glory. I read the glory in tribulations. I, said, I'm, I get excited about the very fact who can get excited about going through? <laughs> but Paul said, I read the glory. He said, I'm, that's the stuff I'm going I'm to find a reason. Let's jump, let's jump there real quick as we kind of dive in. 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, we'll start there and move through. But God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Those of you online, YouTube, Facebook, God bless you. We appreciate you. We welcome you to the City of Hope and for always for our in-person uh, gathering on tonight. God bless you. We love you. Appreciate you. Uh, we know on, on, on the outside it's a little storming and the rains and the streets are wet and slick and we just thank God for his protection throughout this day. Uh, it, it was times like this a few weeks ago we were praying for rain so we can't complain right now that it's here because it was hot. <laughs> you get in your car 111 degrees you touch the steering wheel you whoop you touched the doorknob. It was just that hot, kind of being out there uh, in Phoenix, in, the, in Arizona, out there, it's just that dry heat. And so we thank God that uh, he has blessed us through that. Second Corinthians chapter 
Number 12, uh, remember that uh, verse number 8, Paul says, for this, for this I what? For this thing, my God. Somebody, what a, do, do you know what that thing is in your life? For this thing. This is Paul talking. For this thing, uh, he says, I besought. And, and, you know, it gets to a point where it was so bothersome, it was so troublesome uh, to Paul. He describes it as a thing, this thing. He's like, he's like really pointing it out and he's putting a name to it and saying, this thing. It, it, you know, some of us, you know, is there something right now? You say, Lord, this thing, Lord, this thing. <laughs> My God, we had a subject night on that. Be like, this thing. Lord, you know what that is, this thing for us. Many times uh, we can't even name it. We just say this thing. Because Paul, remember, Paul doesn't name specifically and particularly to us what that specific thing was that troubled him, that was a thorn in his side. But he names it here in verse number eight and said, for this thing. He says, I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. Get up, get out of here. Leave. Leave my house. Leave my address. Leave my street. Uh, leave right now. Depart from me. Don't come near me. I'm, I'm, you've been hanging around too long. You've been, you've been hanging out at my house too long, and I need you to leave. And I'm trying, and Paul said, at first I was trying to be nice about it because I prayed, and then it didn't move. I prayed again, and it still didn't move. And I prayed again. Now this time, Paul like, now this is right here now. I mean, come on, Lord. Come on, Jesus. This right here getting kind of difficult. This right here is, is causing some discomfort. It's causing uh, me almost to act out of character. It's causing me to, it's pushing me uh, further back. It's, it's backing me up. It's, it's, uh, it's hurtful. Uh, as I walk, I can feel the pain. This thing needs to depart. It needs to go. And so we know that the, uh, the writer says, and he said it to me, here go them red letters, right? <laughs> so here come Jesus. He done spoke to him. Aren't you glad when he speaks? Because, you see, Paul was in that place where he wasn't talking. The Lord ain't said nothing. He, I'm, I'm praying he ain't talking to me. I'm talking to him. This is, this is so bothered me that it's caused me to uh, put this at the top of my prayer list. And it ain't on the bottom anymore. It moved up. It's at the very top of my prayer list. And it could be I done stopped praying about that other stuff. That other stuff don't even matter anymore. This thing right here. Right here, Lord. Nothing else. Now, all the rest of that can hold off. I've got to get in your face because I need you to move this thing. And the Lord says to him, what? My, my grace. My grace is what? Is enough. My grace is enough for you. My grace is sufficient for you for my strength. The Lord said, I'm trying to I'm trying to get something out of you. Uh, I'm trying to, in other words, God said, I'm trying to get something to you. <laughs> my strength is coming to you, but my strength is not in you now, but my strength is made perfect when you become weak. When you, when you decrease, then the spirit increases. When you, the part of you that always want to take over and be in control and do it your way. When that, when that part of you gets low, he said, then I can shine. <laughs> I can shine through you. And watch this, Paul says, most glad, gladly, most gladly, therefore, will I would rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may do what? Yes. Oh, my God. That the power of Christ may rest on upon me. So the power of Christ is produced, is displayed in our lives when his strength comes to the forefront through our weakness, through our troubles, through when we can't handle it anymore, through when we get through trying to put our hands on it, when we get through trying to fix it up, God say, when you get tired, <laughs> And you just step on back out the way. Let me rise to the top. Let me, let me, let me do the talking. <laughs> Remember, uh, Jesus told his disciples, he said, listen, don't you worry about anything when you go out. He said, uh, when you open your mouth, he said, what? I'm going to do what? I'm going to speak for you. 
the time that you go out and, and he said, you don't know what to say. He said, don't worry about it. When you open your mouth, I'm going to speak for you. Because we so many times are, are always trying to work it out. Especially, you know, a, a, a good wife, <laughs> a good mother, they trying to work it out. They trying to fix it. They trying to, they trying to put it together. They, they holding the house together, holding the family together. They got the children. Come on. They try to do all. They try to navigate. They cook it. They doing, they doing everything. They putting this thing together. They holding it, doing all they can. And those pressures and those struggles sometimes just, just, just weigh you so down. You don't know what to do. It's those opportunities where he says, I'm going to manifest. God always sometimes, he seems to, to work backwards in terms of what we think he says. Remember he says, humble yourself and I will do what? Exalt you. You would think, no, yeah, yeah, going down. <laughs> going down is the way up. Humble yourself in the mighty hands of God and I will exalt you in due season, due time. He always seems do things backwards to the way we would tradi uh, traditionally do them. Remember, uh, he, he speaks to Samuel and said, look not on the outward. <laughs> he said, when you go down to Jesse's house and you get ready to anoint the next king, he said, a man looking on the outward, but God looks at the what? At the heart. He always seems to go in a different direction in which we plan, we think. Uh, who, uh, the scripture tells us, who, who, can, who can know God? <laughs> You know, as his, his ways are what? Past, find out. As far as the, what? See what I'm saying? Come on now. He shares with us this, that our ways are not his ways. They're not our thoughts, his thoughts. Every time we try to figure him out, he moves. I got him now. I know that. I know. And you get over here and he's gone. Then, oh, yeah, I know you're over here in this corner. Let me go right. Lord, and I'll just get up. Then he moves him over here. He keeps, he keeps moving. He keeps moving back. And, 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 and the more he moves back, the closer we get because he's always trying to keep us coming to him. Coming to him. Coming to him. Coming to him. Look what Paul says. Watch this. Verse number 10. Oh, Lord, I don't know. Can, can, can we read this and... And can we be in the same mindset that Paul was in? Because see, Paul says, what? Therefore, I take pleasure. Hold on. Now, this sounds like it's going in a good direction. But look what he said he's taking pleasure in. Now, it sounds like that, that, those, those words sound real good. Therefore, I take pleasure. That sounds good. That sounds real good on testimony night. Getting ready to say it. I rather take pleasure. Look what Paul says. In what? Infirmity. Infirmity. Wait a minute now. That's a struggle. <laughs> Sickness. Just like when you get up and you make your vows to get married, they say what? In Lord have mercy. In <laughs> help us, help us, Lord. Uh oh, uh oh, somebody leaned over, look at the hills. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I'm saying in sickness and in hell. All right, and that you know that you know that's um. But this next one will get you. This next one will get you. What's the next? One? Uh-uh, what the, no, I'm talking, no, I'm, I ain't in the scripture, I'm in, I'm in the vows. For sickness and health, for rich, come on now, oh, that is right there, I knew it was going to come up, rich, rich, rich and poor. Lord have mercy, oh Lord, that's when you got to call on his name then. Come on, somebody said they been called, Lord have mercy, for rich and poor. Help us, help us. I can't repeat some of this stuff. Scratch that. Rich or poor? I really, because listen, how many want to be rich? So y'all need it. Somebody need, somebody need to repent. Ain't everybody here? And six of them say, I'm, I'm going to be spiritual. I ain't going to live my hand. I'm going to live my hand. I want to know, Lord. Help me. Come on now. Bless me. Bless me. Come on now. Did he say, oh, Lord, oh, who, who, who was that, Jabez? Come on now, Jabez said, well, he blessed me. <laughs> Indeed. He said, Lord, my. come on now. Stretch out. He was telling the Lord. Remember Jabez, you know, he had a name. The name didn't mean much, and he was looked over. And so he did what? He said, Lord, he said, oh, Lord, bless me. See, we can, we can go to him. Come on, we got to stop. Let's listen. Turn your neighbor and say, you better be real with God. Stop playing. Because if ain't about it, he, listen, listen. God knows, he already know your thoughts. You know, it's like, uh, you know, they always, uh, like those movies and stuff, and, and, and the folks be trying to read your mind. And folks, you know, you know, 
you try to like like you put like you put a shield over your mind. You like, I ain't gonna say nothing. Like I mean, listen, God already know your thoughts. He said, I know them a what? I know them a fall. Before watch this. Before your thoughts get to your mind, God said, I already know them. But right now, see that? See what you just thought? Uh-huh, see, whatever you just thought, <laughs> I don't know what you thought. Whatever you just thought, see, you get like, oh, you thought I, you thought I knew what you said, so did <laughs> Whatever you just thought, God already knew that. Before it ended in your head. Come on now, that's, that's, I mean, I want us to just let that sink in how powerful the God we serve. Before, whatever you just thought in the last second, whatever just popped in your head right now, like that chicken tetrazzini you cooking. I mean, whatever, I mean, whatever just, just popped in your head, what you left on the stove. Come on now, come on, let me stop. I mean, whatever you thought about, come on now, what did you cook? Oh, you cook nothing. Come on now, see? <laughs> whatever is on your mind right now, come on now. He not read it before. He already waited. He knew it. That's why we have to pray, Lord, help, help me guard my thoughts. <laughs> Help me, Lord. God, him, God, him. Because, see, the enemy, you trying to throw stuff in there, too, now. The enemy always try to ride your thoughts. Want to jump, jump in on the surfboard. <laughs> they go to wave out there. You know, the surfer is sitting out there in the water. They wait for that next big wave to come through. They just wait. They see, oh, they see, oh, they're going to be a good one. And they start trying. And they ride, they get up on it, and they ride it out. It's the same way with your thoughts. They out there in the ocean waiting to come in. To the shore, waiting to come in. And as you and I must make then a decision, do we then what? Ride the wave. And so he says, before you even think it, I know it. God, you know me. He knows us. He knows our thoughts. He knows us. And so as though we look at people from the outside, he says, I already know what they're all about. And so we should pray that the Lord would help us that we have what? Discern a spirit. <laughs> yes. To discern good from evil. To be able to know when people mean us good or evil, good intentions toward us. When people are trying to set us up in traps. You know, you try. And you know what? You'll learn a lot if you just be quiet. <laughs> they get to talking now. They get to talking. And you just, if you let them talk long enough, what's behind it will come out. And it may sound just as good. It may be delivered like a sweet pie, but you just, you just just sit there long enough and just let it. Sometimes I just sit there and just listen. You just sit there and listen. You stop talking. Even though you want to talk, you just keep your mouth closed long enough. Whatever, whatever that's behind what's coming from them, they might be talking, oh, yeah, we just believe you, blah, blah, blah. Just, you, you'll feel it. You'll see it. Got to open the door that you'll see exactly what people are trying to do and the traps and the tricks and everything that's happening. And here's Paul who says, I'm going to glory in my infirmity. Watch this. In what else he said? In what? In reproaches. Can you go? Oh, this is a good one. Can you glory in your reproach? When folks reproach you, when folks do things against you, like they, they are trying to do it. It wasn't no mistake. They reproach. They, they, are, they are doing the best. Somebody look that up real quick. I, I just feel like we need somebody to find Mr. Google or somebody and say, and, and just, just, just Google reproach. Come on. I want somebody to read that out. What, the, what, what does reproach mean? I think that's a good one for us to land on. Reproach. Reproach. Who got it? Who got it? Amen. Amen. Brother Wilson, you got it. You getting it back there. You trying to get it. Y'all have it over here. The word reproach. Uh-huh. Come on with it. It's a noun or verb. Uh-huh. That refers to. Oh, it's, wait a minute. It's a what? Noun or verb. It's a noun or verb. Come on. That means it can be the subject of or it can be done to you. Come on now. Let's go. That refers to expressing disapproval. Disapproval. When somebody disapproves. Keep going. Anything else? Disappointment. Disappointment. Or criticism. Ooh. Ooh. Or criticism. Do you, do you glory when people criticize you? Can you glory when they criticize your work? <laughs> Can you glory when they talk about what you did, how you look, how you talk, what you trying to do when they criticize your work? Oh, that ain't good enough. 
try it again, and then we ain't talking about no uh, constructive criticism. We talking about criticism. Keep going. Anything else? Or criticism towards someone's actions, Ooh. behavior, or conduct. Ooh, my God, they criticizing you. Reproach. Reproach. My God, anybody got anything else? I was about to say. Oh, go, give me the, give me the, come on, she, oh, come on, sister, get in the mic now. Come put a mic in the mic loose up back there. Oh, there you go, she got one. Reproach the biblical uh, uh, the Nazis. Grace, shame. Oh, say what again? This grace, shame. Oh, God, when you get shamed, when they treat, when they disgracefully shamed, reproach. My God, when, come on, come on. You got something else? It says righteousness exalted a nation, but sin is a reproach. Oh. Reproach. Paul says reproach. I glory in 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 reproaches. And so how and, and so the what, what Sister Lita just read as, as Brother Bold talked about, it can be used as what is a noun or a verb. As Paul uses this, he is talking about the verb form in terms of when somebody does something against you. Paul is not talking about his glory in sin. He is glory in sin. No, he's glory in the fact when they the reproaches, the Bible said reproaches may come. Those reproaches will come. That those who criticize you, come against you, shame you, criticize you. This is what Paul is talking about. Paul says, I choose to glory in it. We still talking about patience. Oh Lord. We still talking about enduring under it and pressing through it. Because now Paul is saying, My God, how much Lord, how much more do you want me to, to take? And how how long should I take it? And here is Paul choosing, knowing that God is not saying I'm going to move it, that this thing that, that's, that's on me may stay with me. I may have to live with it. Ooh. I may have to just deal with it. Paul says, when I went to sleep, he said, I woke up, it was still there. <laughs> I thought maybe, you know, uh, God would get tired of it. But look like God, he did one of them ears, he was long suffering in. He just, he just allowed it to stay with me. And so Paul says, I had to shift my mindset. I had to shift my mind to the, to the fact that I would rather glory. That I just have to just glory in it. That I have to find some solace. I had to watch this. I have to find some peace in it. That that it didn't make sense uh, that, that God allowed it to happen, but I have to just make some sense out of the fact that I rather I rather glory. In other words, he says, I rather take my the time I have. Cause see sometimes people uh, they, they get a point what they do, they just go take a seat. <laughs> They just stop. They stop living. They stop doing. They stop believing. Stop trusting God. They just, they just take a seat. They just, they just get on the sideline, and they just, they just lose themselves. They lose their identity. They lose their sense of purpose. They just, they just they ain't gonna do nothing no more. They just, they just wither away. You know, it, it's, it's something how that when folks um, all of a sudden, uh, you know, as you get a little older, uh, it's important for you to, uh, to be active yes. and to stay active <laughs> and, and to get to doing. And then and you sometimes when you, when you stop, all of a sudden there is a decline. Yep. There is a decline because you have stopped. Here's Paul who is telling us, that when we, when we are surrounded by troubles and pressures and issues and ills, it is not the time to get defeated and to stop. That's the time, he says, you must choose. He says, that's why he said, I rather. Rather means that there's a choice, that I'm making a choice to do something different. So I rather what? Glory. <laughs> 
because I could cry, I could, I could, I could sit here and be in sulk and be and be stagnant, but I would rather because he comes to the point of acknowledging uh, to himself. Uh, and, 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 and I think for the purpose of what Paul says here, I think we all must, uh, with, with the faith of God, uh, just say this out into the atmosphere. I know it's going to be a difficult statement to make, but I think we have to, to make it because I think Paul makes that statement. And that statement is simply this. What if he don't do it? My God. Can you let this sink in? What if God don't change it? Can you make that statement tonight? Lord, what if you don't do it? See, you can't even make it. I just, I just don't say it. Don't say it then. Don't say it. Can you say it? You don't want to say it, do you? That's right. You don't want to say it. But we have to, we have to come to that conclusion. What if you don't do it? He still ain't. Uh-oh, somebody about to mess up. Come on, I ain't there yet. Hold on. What if, what, what, what if he don't? Who, who, watch this now. You know, y'all know I'm right. They don't want to, you don't want me to be right, but you know how I know I'm right. You need some Bible? Does anybody need some Bible? You know you need some Bible. Who am I going to go to? Who, who am I going to go to? Y'all know where I'm going. What them Hebrew boys say? Come on now, what they say? What they say? What they say? If he don't do it. Oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, we're not careful to answer you concerning this Again. But our God is able to deliver us out of your hand, out of, out of this fire of fairness, and out of your hand. But if He don't do it, they had made up their mind. <laughs> We're gonna have to go on to this because you, you, you're the king, you're in control. We can't change that. We're not gonna bow to, to your tenants. We're not gonna bow to what you put in place. So if we have to suffer what the consequences of our action, we rather stay true to our living God. We rather stay true to living saved. We rather stay true to being holy, to be separate. We rather stay true to, to, the, to, the, to the gospel, to the Bible, to what is right. I won't change. I won't do it your way. I'm going to be right. I'm going to do right. I'm going to say right. I'm going to walk with God, how God wants me to walk. But if that causes me to have to go in this fiery furnace, if that causes me to be in your hand, that you think I'm in your hand, that's okay. Because if he does not do it, what I'm going to hold and trust to is what? That I know he's what? I know he's able. So Paul shifts his mind and says, if he don't take this thorn out of my flesh, if he don't move this mountain, if he don't change this situation, if he don't pay this bill, if he don't turn this situation, come on now, come on, come on. He trying to help us. He trying to, to lead, <laughs> nudge somebody. Don't let him do hard. Devil, he trying to help us grow. God trying to help us grow. He 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 trying to help us grow. Because that's a sign of maturity. That you that you just, you just make up your mind, Lord, if you don't do this. Because that's what Paul had to do. Paul had to, he, even Apostle Paul is, is, is needing his faith to be injected. Need, need, needing his faith to be infused, to be strengthened in this moment. This great, powerful evangelist. This man who by his hand many have been saved, who have been delivered from the hand of the enemy. He has seen God do miraculous things. He had heard things he couldn't repeat out of the heavens. He had seen God work miracles. He has to acknowledge, watch this, that even now I need God to work a miracle in my mind. I need God to work a miracle in my life because what I'm facing and dealing with now, I have to choose not to get into it, but I have to rather glory in it and praise and thank God that though he slay me, that's what Job said, though he slay me, come on now, though I lose my children, my house of Job, my money, my possessions, my livelihood, my physical health. Don't he, he, he equates everything that God has allowed to occur in his life. He calls it God slaying him. Though he, not the devil, no, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. 
He, my God. I'm going to trust him. So Paul does the same thing. I read the glory in my infirmities. In other words, before I allow the enemy to think he's going to get glory in my life, I read the glory in it. <laughs> I know you feel like crying. <laughs> I, know pre I know the heat is on. My God, they just turned the fiery furnace back on. Lord have mercy. I, you see the flames. You feel them. It's right around the corner. You're in the midst of it. But yet, I read the glory. I'm going to give God the glory and the praise. I'm going to thank him. What well, they say, can you praise him in the fire? Oh, oh, my God. My God, can you praise him in the fire? Can you lift him up? Paul says, I read the glory in my infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities. That's a good one, necessities. Oh, come on, look it up. Y'all gotta look it up. I feel like we need to stay here a little bit. Necessities, necessities. Who's, who's gonna get that for us? Necessities. Persecutions in distress, in necessities. This is going to be a good one here. Necessities. The fact of being required or indispensable. Uh-huh. The fact of being required or indispensable. Uh-huh. Keep going. Anybody else? Necessities. In necessities. And necessities can vary uh -huh. depending on context, uh -uh. but often include items like food. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Water. Yes. Shelter. Uh oh. Clothing. Oh, come on. And basic health care. Oh, come on now. They uh, are the things. Things. That are vital for a person's well-being. Come on. And survival. Oh my God. Paul says. Paul gonna help us now. He says. He says. Even when I'm in places, I don't have enough food. Or when I feel like things are not adequate. Water, shoes, clothing. Now, now Paul's not talking about that. He's not talking about you living on the street. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about all of us at some point. We, 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 we want the finer things in life. We want a house. We want a car. We want nice clothes. We want these things. But then Paul shares with us that he has experienced times when he has been in need, when he may not have had proper shelter, clothing, food. There are many instances throughout the scriptures you'll find uh, even Paul uh, is, is, is uh, he writes to one particular church and he shares with them, he says he thanks them for sharing in his need. And when he was an evangelist, it was the churches that would pool funds together to, to, to fund the missionary work. And he was thanking one of those churches for when he was in need, they had sent a gift. And so he also shares with another church at one time uh, that he said, I didn't want you to give to me. <laughs> He said, because I didn't want you to, to be lifted up in terms of the fact that you felt like that, that, I, that, I, that I needed something from you and that you funded my need. That's why Paul says, and I, so in whatever state I find myself in, I find myself to be what? Content. Because he wanted to always know that God, that's why he says this, for my God shall supply all of my need. He was speaking to that particular church, not be, uh, that he wanted from them in terms of them being able to give to him in ministry to do. He said he wanted them to understand that the greater picture of them when they gave to him or gave to ministry, that God was going to help them and bless them for doing it, but he was not begging them for it because he understood at the end of the day that his God will supply of his need according to his riches in glory that God some kind of way will fund me God will make sure I am taken
taken care of. God is responsible for me. And so in that type of thinking and operating from that, there were times when he did not have. <laughs> there were times, Paul, remember Paul, his occupation, Paul was a tent maker. And there were times that when he went on missionary work, that he went to work. <laughs> he would go make tents <laughs> to fund the ministry. He would go do it. He would purposely do that to show them that he was not above working. He did that. Not that he had to, because it was the responsibility of the ministry to take care of him. But he knew at the end of the day that God was responsible for him. And so here's Paul saying, I glory. I rather glory in those times when I didn't have. I didn't, in other words, I'm not taking all the focus off God and put it on my knee and say, Lord, why, why, why? I'm spending my energies giving him glory and praise because I know wherever I am, he's able to get me out of it. This is Paul helping us to learn how to endure, how to be patient, how to wait on God, knowing God is faithful to do what he said he would do in our life. He says, I read the glory, what? In persecution. In distresses. Oh, he going off the deep end. Now, he done went way out there. Persecution and distresses. Somebody help me. Distresses. Distresses. Persecution and distresses. Help me, brother Bob. Find out distresses. Watch this. For Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then what? Am I strong? Distresses. What's distresses? Distresses is a plural form of the noun distress. Uh huh. Distress refers to a state of extreme sorrow, Ooh. suffering, or hardship. Oh my God. Say that one more time to live for a, a place of what? Extreme what? A place, a state of extreme sorrow. Uh, stop right there. Stop right there. Have you, have, have you ever experienced extreme sorrow? Extreme sorrow. I think all of us at some point in your life yes. has experienced some extreme sorrow. Here, now this is, this is Paul trying to help you and I. He's trying to help us because there will be times in our life that we experience extreme sorrow. A place, a deep place, a place where we feel like we can't even shake it. Can't shake it. It's just like it, it is so extreme. You woke up and said, I thought you was over it. But that, that song you heard brought it on back. <laughs> mm -hmm. That song you saw on TV brought it on back. Some, somebody said it brought it on back. Extreme. It's just down in there deep. And it's just like, it just keep, it just, it just bubbles itself to the top. And his Paul says that we can learn how, to, how, to, how, how, how God can, can get glory out of those places. God, God try, Paul trying to help us. God uses Paul to help you and I to understand that there will be some, some thorns in our flesh. There'll be some, there'll be some times in our life that there are things that we cannot shake, we can't get rid of, that, that just hangs around. And instead of us glorying in that and being defeated in that, we learn how to glory in the fact that God is able to bring us through it. That because God may not move it. God, God, God may let that thing linger for some years, for some months, some days, some weeks. It, it just may linger. But we don't have to get engulfed and lose ourselves amongst what is we're going through because he's already told Paul that his grace was sufficient. That God's grace for me, that's what you have to say to yourself, God's grace for me is sufficient for this thing. God's grace that he's already afforded to me, that he's already given to me, is enough. And Paul says, can you, did you see that? How he says, God says, my grace is sufficient. And then Paul goes through all this laundry list of things that you and I suffer, go through, deal with on a daily basis. And that, that grace that he gave is sufficient for all of that. That little grace that God gave you is enough for all of the issues you will ever have to face. 
God's grace. Watch this. Amazing grace. How sweet that sounds. That, that, that's why the writer has to say that. Because the grace that he gives, it's, it has to be amazing. Because there's no way in the world that you and I can suffer through all these various levels of emotional, physical pain, issues, distresses, persecutions, necessities, poor, hungry, rich, don't have nothing, got some, don't matter, folks talk about you, lied on you, distress, in trouble, persecuted, talked about, put down, left over, looked over, stepped over, stepped on, all of these distresses and places and bondage and weakness, have, don't have, looking, waiting on God, hurt, all of this, and then God says, when you are weak, that's when you strong. Because when you weak naturally, weak to this world, weak in what you're going through, he says, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. That's when I come to, that's when I come to the rescue. That's when I show up in your behalf. I'm able to do it for you. My God. Come on, let's close out. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Help me, bro. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 32 through 38. Hebrews 10, 32, my God, through 38. Hebrews chapter 10. All right. Verse 32 through 38. Read. But call to remembrance uh -huh. the former days. Come on. <laughs> call to remember the former days, yes. In which, uh -huh. after ye were illuminated, come on here. He endured a great fight of affliction. Come on now, bro. He said, now listen, uh, before we get ready to close, he said, you need to call to remember. You sitting right here, you that are online, you need to remember the former day. When you when you going through something in your present, you have to leverage of something from your past. You got to leverage of what God then already brought you out of, what you have already seen him do. My God, what he's already changed and rearranged in your life because the enemy, that's the one thing he don't want you to do. He does not want you to remember what God has done or what God has brought you out of. He always wants you to focus on where you are in your current state, your current situation, your current distress, your current necessity, your current persecution, your current problem, your current adversity, your current fiery furnace, whatever is current, he wants you to focus your mind so much on that that you forget about what God has already done. So Paul says what I need you to do is to remember the former days. Keep going. Partly. Partly. Which ye were made and gazed in stock. Uh-huh. Both by reproaches and afflictions. Come on now. And partly. Which ye became companions of them that were so used. Come on now. For ye had compassion of me and uh -huh. my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods. Come on. Knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Yes. Cast not away, therefore you. I go on back up. Well, Y'all didn't catch it. Go back 32. Let me start over and walk through this just a little bit. Pop. Here's the Hebrew writer is writing back to this church trying to share with them. I want you to remember something that you did in the past. He says, I want you to remember when you got illuminated. I want to keep going. Read it one more time. But call to remembrance. Call to remembrance. Days, the former days. In which. In which. After ye were illuminated. After you got saved. Come on. Ye endured a great fight of affliction. When you got saved, you came out the world. All of a sudden, the devil got mad, got upset. Your church was persecuted again. You had affliction. All these things were happening. Keep going. Partly. Partly. Which ye were made a gaze and stop. You did what? You were made a gaze and stop. By both, by both by reproaches and afflictions. Come on, that goes on reproaches again and afflictions. Uh-huh, keep going. And partly, which ye became companions of them that were so used. Come on. For ye had compassion of me in my bonds. Come on now. He said, he said, see, what, 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 what God remembers is that when we are able to help somebody else. Come on now. But, but there were times that you struggled, but then you, you learned how to help somebody else. See, that we must never forget that somebody else is going through just like we are. That we're not the only one, and that we can't get in our silos and get to ourselves and get like, oh, I'm the only one that's going through. Somebody else is going through something, and we must not forget how to share and show the love of God to others.
us even when we're going through. Keep going. And to joyfully the spoiling of your good, uh -huh. knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring stuff. They said they took their stuff, they, 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 they robbed them, they took it from them, the early church, they, 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 they took their stuff, the things that belonged to them, and he said you took it with a good attitude. Keep going. Cast not away, therefore. Oh, he said, but don't cast away your confidence. Which have great recompense. Which have great recompense. Of reward. Of reward. For ye have need of patience. You have need of patience. That. That. After ye have done the will of God. After you've done the will of God. Ye might receive the promise. You might receive the promise. For, for yet a little while. Uh-huh. And he that shall come. Come on. Will come. He will come. Do you know what the Hebrew writer saying is? Hebrew writer says, now listen, in your current state, in your current situation, what you're facing right now, says, I want you to remember something. I want you to remember this, that there was a time right now, it could be too, too many years ago, there was a time when you, when, you, when you first came out, when you came into the church, and you were excited about what God was doing, and, the, and he said you struggled because they, they look, you look at you, you, call yourself saved. Now look at you, you went over there, you, you lost friends, you lost all types of things because then you called yourself to be sanctified, left out, you were, got set apart from the world, and he said it cost you some things, but yet you stay true to the very fact of God, who he was, and what he wanted to do in your life. He said you were a giver, you gave to others. Y'all, come y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all remember how we were in the old church, in the early church? He said it did not matter that we helped each other. We did all that we could to, to, be, to be saved, to be sanctified. He said remember that time. Bring those same habits, attitudes, dispositions into your current now. Because y'all remember, we, back in the day, they didn't have nothing. Come on now. I'm talking about your, your mothers and your mothers and your grandfathers, folks and like that. I'm talking about those Bishop Coleman days. I'm talking about those back in the early church. They didn't have nothing, but they had a praise. They had a prayer life. They believed God, trusted God, had faith, walked in God's anointing and their power. They didn't have much money. They didn't have much of anything, but they had God. He said, listen, they, but you know what those saints, they had a confidence. They had a confidence in their God that he was able to do whatever that they asked for him to do. It wasn't about what they had what they possessed, what they drove, but you know the days are a little different now. And that's what's wrong with us today. We all caught up in the forms and the fashion and the fads and all these things. He said, remember the former days. He said, now, cast not away your confidence. They had a great confidence in their God. You and I must have that same confidence in the God that we serve, that he is able to do what he said he would do because it is him writer says, cast not away your confidence, which has great recompense of war, and after you have what? Done the will of God. He said that you might receive the promise. You have a promise that's from God that when we learn how to wait on him, because he that promised to come, he what? He will come. Turn to somebody else, he will come. He will come. Everybody stand. He, he will come. He will. <laughs> Matter of fact, he's got to come. He got to come. You online, do you believe that? He's got to come. <laughs> My God. If I don't mean to I don't mean to jump back to the world, but we gotta, we gotta, we gotta look at the world, and, and we gotta, we gotta know something about it. If, if Deion Sanders, come on now, come on now, you know where I'm going. Come on now, if he can take, if he can take, first of all, if he can come to Jackson State, <laughs> and they believe, come on now. For two years, was it three years? How many years? For three years? And two last two years, last two years, champions. Yeah. If he can come in and these young men can say, I believe. Now see, most folks say that's a fluke. <laughs> that, one, that wasn't nothing, that wasn't real, blah, blah, blah. And watch it now. So he said, okay, 
I'm gonna go to Colorado. Right. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna take the same formula. I'm gonna take the same stuff. And you know what? And I'm gonna go up there and I'm gonna tell the whole team, y'all, y'all believe I brought my own bag. Come on now. I, I got my own, I'm bringing my own stuff, bring my own luggage. I got my own quarterback. Come on now. And come up there, come on now. We ain't we won't speak too premature, but now two and oh. And them same boy, them same different boys saying what? I believe. He said, we coming. Now he said, we ain't coming, we, we here. <laughs> but, but I'm saying, he, if you do it down here, and then you go somewhere and you do it, then you got to say, okay, it ain't a flu. It's real. It, it's something to it. It's the same thing. You know what? <laughs> the God that you serve, he ain't changed. <laughs> the, the God that'll work down here, the God that worked back then, is the same God that'll work right now. Come on now, the, 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 the same God. Same God. The, now watch this now. I want you, we get ready to go. The same one same. that opened up a red sea. Y'all don't believe it, we just read it. We, we read it like it's a fairy tale. We, we, we read it like it's a story in a book, a, a fairy tale. No, it's real. The God that opened up a red sea is the same God you serve. Come on now, that's the same one. That's the same one. So we can trust in him. Lord, help us, help us tonight. Help us to trust you. Help us to trust in you. Help us to be like Paul. God, that we're able to say we're the glory in. That God, I choose the glory in my infirmities and my reproaches and my distresses. I don't choose to give up. I choose to give you glory. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I choose not to turn around. But I choose to lift my hands. I choose to praise you and give you the glory. No, it's not comfortable. No, nobody wants to be persecuted, God. The stresses are not good. Oh, my, being in need and necessity and, and persecution and distresses and infirmities. No, they don't sound good. No, they're not popular. But God, all I know is your grace is sufficient. Help us, help us tonight. Help us to find you in it. Find our strength comes through weakness. Find that strength comes through struggle. Help your people now in Jesus' name. If there's one tonight who's not been baptized in Jesus' name, don't feel with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. He is here to help you. He is with us. He's in the room right now. He can help you. He's in your room now. You, you may be watching from YouTube or Facebook. You might be in your living room right now. He'll come right where you are to see about your need. There's a number on your screen. You connect with us. We want to connect with you. God wants to help you. He wants to give you the strength. You may have an infirmity now. That may be a thorn in your flesh. But his grace is sufficient for you. Father, we thank you for those who are listening now. Those who would listen from delayed transcript. That God, you would help them to go through whatever they're going through. Now unto him that's able to keep. My God, us from falling. And to present us all this. And we thank you to the only wise God. Be dominion and power. It's for now and forever. In Jesus' name. God bless you tonight. Listen, as we get ready to give, get ready to close and get ready to give. You'll see four ways of giving on your screen. I want you to join with us as a partaker in giving in ministry. In ministry of giving. God has the, so much more he wants to do for us because he wants to do it through us. He's giving seed to the sower, bread to the eater. God wants to help you as you so into ministry. So as you see now, you see four ways of giving on your screen. Find one of those means to give now. And give it so even right now. My God. Father, thank you for these seeds that are being sown now. My God, for your people who are giving, not just giving anywhere, but giving back to you. God, because you're the one that first gave to us. Thank you, God, for being an example of true giving. We thank you even now. Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. We love you. Appreciate you. Thank you for being with us tonight. Listen, we're online this Sunday. Online, YouTube, Facebook. Meet us 10 o'clock for our Zoom, 11 o'clock for our morning service. Be with us. We know God's going to bless us and God's going to help you. I always know there's hope because Jesus is our hope. Come on. Let the church say amen. Everybody stand. We're getting ready to go. Let the church say amen. Let the church. Let the church.